Tourists visiting Germany are taught about Madman King Ludwig and all the money he wasted on pointless castles that he used as nothing other than toys. Books, brochures, TV documentaries on infinite rerun, and board tour guides repeat the narrative unthinkingly, endlessly, maddeningly. None of it is true. Grab a cup of coffee or tea, sit back and enjoy being a witness to history in the faking. Chiemsee, or Chiem Lake, is a water near the Bavarian Alps. I learned windsurfing here in the 90s. I visited the castle Herrenchiem Sea three times as a fully dressed tourist. But once, I reached the island by surfboard and sail, instead of going through the proper channels of ticket office and ferry. It was one of those days I felt adventurous. I've seen a lot of places on earth, but southern Bavaria remains among the most beautiful. The island is called Herrenchiem Sea, or Gentleman's Chiem Sea in English. The palace is called Schloss Herrenchiem Sea, or Castle Herrenchiem Sea. Here it is on Google Earth, at the center of a line that cuts through the island. The official narrative is, construction began 1878 by Ludwig II, King of Bavaria. He was the crazy king because he spent a lot of money that he didn't have building castles across southern Germany. As any tour guide will assure you, Ludwig commits suicide by drowning himself in a lake. Never mind that these ideas were debunked by other authors a long time ago. The tourist guides keep telling the stories because they're more entertaining. In reality, Ludwig had plenty of money. At one point, he was considered the richest king of Europe. He died through gunshots, according to the sworn testimony of several persons. But this video is not the place to reiterate things which have already been written by others. The castle was incomplete in 1885 and its construction discontinued due to the king's death in 1886. Shortly after, it was opened to the public. I guess it won't come as a surprise to you that. I don't believe it was built by Ludwig. I don't believe it was built in the late 1800s. This is a photo by George Dahlman, who also designed the castle, had it constructed and even furnished the castle's interior. A real one-man show. The photo is dated 1878 to 1885, can't they get an exact date? History teaches that George Dahlman fell out of favor with the king and was fired in 1884. Imagine that. You design, construct and furnish several sensationally beautiful castles, and then you're fired. Anyway, since he was fired in 1884, the photo would have been taken before then. The problems with this photo are, firstly, the photo couldn't have been taken in 1878 if construction began in 1878. Secondly, if it was taken between 1878 and 1885, the building would have been brand sparkling new. The building photographed here isn't new by any stretch. It's worn and weathered. This building wasn't new in the late 1800s. It had already been standing for hundreds of years. I'm sure of it, just from looking at one photo. Do I need to go on? This photo was published in 1880, just two years after construction began. The whole structure is complete, the pavement is finished, the fountains are done. And there's even a mystery building to the left of the castle, which we'll get to later. A lot of photos from 1880 show people lounging around, even though it was only open to the public in 1886. They're not dressed like construction workers, so who are they? It's not impossible to complete this whole thing in two years. But modern projects of similar size and less style often take longer. I'd be curious to know what building techniques accomplish this. Tour guides don't go into that. George von Dahlmann, born in 1830, is a superstar architect. His German Wikipedia page lists him as responsible for these buildings, among many others. One of the structures, the Freetungschau, is from 1842, when Dahlmann must have been 12 years old. What an early starter. Yes, I realize Wikipedia is riddled with errors and that this does not necessarily prove or disprove anything. I only found one construction photo of the castle using several search engines in English and German. If you find only one, chances are high it's a fabrication. But even if the photo were real, we see a building already complete, surrounded by dirt. They might as well have dug it up out of the ground and then washed or refurbished it. The caption below the image says it's from 1880. There are plenty of photos from 1880 showing palace and grounds already complete. But here, the ground is undeveloped. 
How quickly did they make those stairs, fountains, and walkways? This hole is already teetering at the edge of credibility. This is an interior view, 1880, and that's just one room. Contrast this with a drawing said to have been made in 1880 of the castle's construction. It's the only construction drawing I've found. We have one construction photo and one construction drawing, both supposedly from 1880. The photo shows train tracks leading up to the construction site, presumably to transport the building materials. The drawing shows a train transporting building materials. The drawing seems to be imaginary. The castle was built mid-island, not right next to the waters. It doesn't look like the artist was personally present. Wikipedia says, The island, formerly the site of an Augustinian monastery, was purchased by King Ludwig II of Bavaria in 1873. The king had the premises converted into a residence, known as the Old Palace, Altes Schloss. From 1878 onwards, he had the new Herrenschium Sea Palace erected, or Neue Schloss, based on the model of Versailles. It was the largest but also the last of his building projects and remained incomplete. Today maintained by the Bavarian administration of state-owned palaces, gardens and lakes, Herrenschium Sea is accessible to the public and a major tourist attraction. This is the Bold Palace is claimed to be the nearby abbey. According to tradition, the Benedictine Abbey of Herrenschium Sea was established about 765 AD by the Agilolfing Duke Tassilo III of Bavaria at the northern tip of the Herreninsel. New findings, however, indicate an even earlier foundation between 620 and 629 by the Burgundian missionary St. Eustace of Luxor. The present-day Baroque monastery complex was erected between 1642 and 1731. In the course of the German mediatization, Herrenschium C. Abbey was secularized in 1803, the cathedral desecrated in 1807, and the Chiemsee Diocese finally dissolved in 1808. The island was then sold. Various owners demolished the cathedral, sold the interior, and even turned the abbey into a brewery. King Ludwig II of Bavaria warded off plans for the complete deforestation of the island by a Württemberg timber trade company by acquiring it in 1873. He had the leftover buildings converted for his private use, the complex that later became known as the Bold Palace, where he stayed surveying the construction of the new Herrenschium Sea Palace. Let's have a look at this monastery that supposedly served as the Old Palace. This is a painting from 1770. This is what it currently looks like on Google Earth. Here's the part of the old painting that interests me. This gardened and gated area of fountains is missing in today's version of the Abbey. My point is, the 1700 style and design of these gardens is similar to those supposedly made by Ludwig and Dahlmann for Ludwig's palace much later. The castle depicted in this 1721 drawing is a mere 10 minute drive from the shore of Chiemsee in a village called Frasdorf. Again, notice the garden design. A one hour drive from Chiemsee, we find the city of Munich and this castle built in 1664. I could point out hundreds of structures that have a strong similarity to Ludwig's castle of Herrenschium C that were built much earlier. This video is just an introduction to something I find really fascinating. I've split this into four or five parts because it was too long and I didn't want to take up too much of your time. If you find this video interesting, I look forward to seeing you in part two. Thank you.